Hello there YouTube, a pretty long video today on how I clean and lube my CZ Scorpion EVO 3S1, just basic maintenance. There are probably different ways to clean this gun, but in this video I'll basically try to give you an overview on how I do it, talk about what products I use, etc. This Scorpion has been with me for about two years now and has served me quite well for competitive shooting as well as for recreational use. I wanted a pistol caliber carbine for competition and after considering a couple of other options I went with this beauty. I never ever regretted my choice. I absolutely love this gun, it works great and I am one of those people that like to clean after each range session, especially because this thing is so much fun to shoot that I just tend to shoot a whole bunch of rounds through it every time I take it out to the range. Okay, so let's get started. Of course, you release the magazine first and you make sure the chamber is empty and you drop the hammer. You pull the cocking handle all the way to the rear and lock the slide back. You then push the disassembly pin from right to left. Don't worry about losing it because it's captured. And then you can pull the lower out in a backward and downward motion. You then put your thumb on the bolt and push it down and forward under a 35 degree angle. And as you can see, it will come out. Try not to crush your thumb if this is the first time you are doing this. I then usually put the upper assembly to the side and start working on some of the other parts first. Now in contradiction to what I do on most of my other guns, I do not use a dedicated lubricant on the Scorpion. I use Ballistol and Bruinox both for cleaning and lubricating. So I just spray it on the bolt, I spray it on the inside of the gun, especially the feed ramp and the inside of the barrel, and I just let it soak in there for a while. I usually take off this flash hider because I like to wipe it off and clean most of the dirt off, and it's just a bit easier when it's not attached to the gun. I then usually start working on the bolt first. Put some more ballast all on there. Take some oil wipes. <coughs> and just start <coughs> wiping off most of that dirt. Now on the breech face of the bolt, um, some of the dirt is just a little harder to just wipe off so I sometimes I use a steel uh, or a nylon brush depending on how dirty it is and I just basically wipe everything off and then again you can go in there with some of the oil wipes and just um, it'll just come off a lot easier. To knock out the extractor just knock the long pin from bottom to top and be cautious because the extractor spring is quite strong. If you do this, it might be a good idea to wipe off the firing pin while you're at it. To get it out, you push the pin hidden under the extractor from the opposite side towards the extractor side. And before removing, depress the firing pin block plunger, which will lift out once you have the firing pin taken out. Furthermore, you can disassemble the recoil system, but I would not see any need for that unless you have a very old and worn out recoil spring sitting in your gun. However, it might be a good idea and even advisable to take out the extractor and give it a thorough cleaning every now and then because you would be surprised to see just how much dirt actually gets in there after about 2,000 rounds or less. Other than that, cleaning the bolt, just wipe it off, pretty straightforward. As I said before, nothing fancy here. Um, just try to get into those tiny groves and canals and make sure you get all of the dirt out. After a couple of thousand rounds, as you can see on my bolt here, you start to see wear, which is completely normal. That's just where all the friction and all the action is taking place. So just make sure that before you reassemble the gun, you make sure you lubricate these areas with Ballistol or Brunox. In my case, uh, for lubrification after cleaning, I only use Ballistol. I use Ballistol on the inside. Um, of the bolt and I use it on the outside of the bolt. Some of the areas on the bolt are more difficult to reach to and in those cases you could use q-tips 
Just these basically cotton uh, Q-tips you can buy at your local grocery store, put some solvent on them, and they will allow you to get really get inside those tiny little hard to reach areas. So as you can probably see, I like to take my time when cleaning. I like to go into all those tiny little areas and make sure it is absolutely spick and span before I reassemble it. Um, maybe I just like to take my time when cleaning because I like cleaning. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. Um, why is that? I don't know. I just like it when my gun functions okay and when... I just kind of like to rule out all possible other reasons for malfunction than my own errors. Um, I haven't had any malfunction with this gun. Um, so that's probably why I like to just clean it and clean it all over again. Now talking about the extractor again, if you don't want to take it out, one of these flat-shaped Q-tips uh, will do a great job in getting behind the extractor. The extractor on the Scorpion is massive and you can easily, with a flat Q-tip, you can easily get behind it and start wiping some of the extra dirt out. And as you can see, there still is some dirt left in there. Personally, I don't see any strong need to disassemble the whole bolt every time you clean it, but occasionally just knock out this pin um, bottom to top and clean it. Uh, as I mentioned before, you'd be surprised on just how much dirt accumulates in there. So use Q-tips if you don't have time, and otherwise don't be afraid of taking the extractor out. It will just add another five minutes to your cleaning time. So let's continue with the lower trigger assembly. It will not get extremely dirty, but you might get some powder residue and some dirt in there. Basically stuff you can just wipe or brush out. No real need to disassemble the whole piece. I take out the main trigger assembly using the screw um, with about the same frequency as I disassemble the bolt. Let's say every 2,000 rounds or so. So basically the same rule here. Just wipe everything off. You wipe off um, all those parts where you can see metal on metal friction is taking place. Actually, you can see the bluing disappear in those places, and that's where you want to clean and put blue before reassembly. So furthermore, you want to make sure you clean this block lever, uh, your safety pin with Brunox, and of course these contact parts of the hammer where they meet the bolt. You just want to wipe everything off, and for those parts that are harder to reach, and they are less accessible, again, you can use a Q-tip if necessary. I also like to clean the funnel, magazine funnel. Um, I found out I get quicker mag releases and mag changes when I clean this on a regular basis. Some areas, however, are more difficult to reach like this one, just behind the extractor. And then again, as I said before, use Q-tips for those areas that are harder to reach um, and just get all the excess dirt and fouling out of there. I know there are people who clean as little as possible or that just put some spray and pray. Most guns will keep on functioning, even when very, very dirty, but some internal parts might wear out faster or even get damaged. I mean, I respect anyone's opinion. I just like my stuff clean, so I take my time. One other very good reason is that if you keep everything nice and tidy inside the gun, you can remain pretty confident that you will be spared of any technical malfunctions during shooting and that if anything doesn't work out during competition or during that vital stage, it will be the shooter and not the gun. The reason why I'm saying this um, is that even though CZs are known all over the world for their reliability, even if you don't clean them very often, I know some guys who actually managed to get hiccups 
technical hiccups with their CZ Scorpion, and those are typically the kind of the kind of people that never ever clean their gun. So I mean, maintenance is important, even if it's a CZ or a Glock or whatever. Sometimes you just gotta sit your ass down and clean your gun. It's as simple as that. Then, once you're ready and you're happy with the result, you just put the lower assembly to the side. Um, I typically clean this flash hider as well. Just take another um, rem oil patch and turn it through there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Nothing too fancy, just me having shitloads of fun while doing maintenance on my favorite scorpion. I think it's about as clean as it should be by now. Lots of people put compensators on this gun. I haven't tried that yet. I don't really see the point in it. But if you have any ideas on this matter, please let me know. I sure wouldn't do it for aesthetical reasons, only if there is something else to gain, but I can't really imagine it will help much to get shots on target faster with this gun. The last few q-tips. Now let's get started on the barrel. In the meanwhile, um, the cleaning solvent that I use for cleaning the barrel, this ballastol, has taken its time to soak in there and it should be really easy now to get all the dirt out. Um, what you could do is remove, and at this stage, remove the buttstock um, I don't find that really necessary, uh, so I'm not going to do that. I just clean the inside of the upper receiver with a brush. I clean the feed ramp of the barrel. Make sure I get all the dirt out of there. And here again, those tiny little surfaces um, next to the barrel are pretty much where all the dirt uh, accumulates. <clears throat> so I tend to use q-tips for these areas as well and then it's like brush q-tip and then oil wipe in that order to get everything out on this part the upper receiver if you are using old cotton t-shirts even if they're really well soaked in oil you might get some of the cotton that stays behind on the rough surfaces inside of the uh, upper receiver. If you happen to see uh, that, please brush them out because all these little parts may cause extra friction that you do not want on the inside of this gun. I then continue in cleaning the crown of the barrel. Uh, I brush it off first and then I wipe it off with a bit of oil wipe, brush again, oil wipe again in that order until the oil wipe is clean after uh, getting in touch with the barrel. I then use this Osborne pipe brush or barrel brush. It's, it is a 9.13 millimeter brush and I turn it in until I see it come out at the end of the chamber and then I gently pull it back. I do this only once. I then take this cleaning cord that comes with the gun or you, that you can also buy separately if you haven't found it inside the box when you acquired the gun and I pull it through the barrel a couple of times. I 
I then attach another oil wipe, only a small tiny part, and I attach it to the end of the pull through cord. And I pull it through the barrel of the gun. Make sure the knot is not too big or it will remain stuck inside the chamber. You have to pull it out manually. So I just gently pull it through and I repeat this operation a couple of times until the patch comes out clean. I then take another piece of oil wipe and attach it to the front brass end of this little handy gadget and to make sure I don't put any dirt back into the, the gun, especially back into the chamber, I screw it in on the breech end. Just screw it in and pull through. I repeat this operation once or twice until again the patch comes out clean. Okay, so once you're happy with the result, you can stop cleaning and it is then time to start lubing all the parts and put them back together. I use Ballastol on the bolt for cleaning and lubing, as I said in the beginning of this video, and I tend to apply the Ballastol with my finger. Ballastol will leave a film on the parts you want to protect against uh, corrosion and will also uh, function as a lubricant, um, it will harden up in time. So if you are the kind of person that doesn't clean very often, you might be considering using gun oil for lubrification. Just remember to put lube on all the parts where you see the bluing disappear, because that's where the friction is taking place. So that's those are the important parts. And for your lower trigger assembly, put some lube on the ejector. I uh, put some on the hammer as well. Basically, I tend to lubricate all the parts that come in contact with the bolt. And as you can see, I use ballastol on these parts, just like CZ prescribes in its manual doesn't hurt to put a little too much don't worry about that you might want to if you take uh, the trigger group out you might want to put some ballastol in there uh, clean it put everything back and then re-loop everything um, I put some on, on the on the pin uh, that holds uh, the lower to the upper assembly of the gun as well and then I put Brunox um, on the safety And of course, the final step before reassembly is putting some Brunox in here. Uh, the part where the bolt reciprocates inside the housing. It's important you put lube there too. Uh, this time, no metal on metal friction, but metal on plastic. Now, Ballistol does not react in any way with uh, Brunox, so you shouldn't worry about that. I just put some lube in there and spread it around the entire housing with my finger, especially those rails uh, on which the bolt reciprocates. And you can also put a few drops on the charging handle um, on the part where it catches the bolts. 
and then you're basically ready for reassembly. So put the bolt back and push it down with your finger, catch it with the slide wrecker and pull it forward. Then take your lower, push it in from the back, upwards, push the pin through and it should be, should be alright. Just a quick function check and you're done. And so to wrap things up, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave me a private message or post a comment. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. As usual, thanks for watching. See ya.